and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. If you haven't already done so, please stow your carry-on luggage underneath the seat in front of you or in the overhead bin. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelt, and also make sure your seatbelt and folding trays are in their full upright position. If you have any questions about our flight today, please don't hesitate to ask one of our flight attendants. Thank you and enjoy your flight. If you're like me, a child of the 80s, and uh, you would have probably read about it in books or be thought about it in class, we would all would, would have seen this poster of Wawasan Duoplo Duoplo, something that was unveiled by at the time, uh, our Prime Minister Tun Mahathir as his vision for how Malaysia would look like in 2020. So in that poster, which I think a lot of us will remember, you would see uh, high-rise skyscrapers uh, that reach the sky. You would see bullet trains that were whizzing through the buildings. And yeah, to a certain extent, we have those things. And a major element on that was we would see flying cars. Now, of course, there were roads and there were cars on those roads, I believe, and they looked very futuristic. But a major element was flying cars. Now, flying cars are nothing new. We've seen many, many different types of them come over the years, and uh, a lot of people have tried uh, to, to uh, design cars that can be uh, d uh, built for private ownership whereby you know you, you handle the congestion problems of the world by actually taking to the sky so you don't use the roads. Simple enough a concept uh, and it's not unfounded. Many, many uh, companies including uh, companies like Boeing and Bell uh, Technologies and a ton of new startups uh, are all actively designing uh, cars that are flying cars or how they would like to call it uh, air taxis. So basically uh, s small aircrafts that can uh, autonomously manned or unmanned take off from the ground, uh, go from point A to point B and set itself down again. Now the, the industry is expected to be worth in the hundreds of billions of dollars in the years to come. So it's not something that is totally far-fetched. A lot of countries, a lot of companies are actually uh, you know, thinking about how this is going to revolutionize personal transport, uh, how we can deal with congestion and how you know, people uh, will start to move around faster. Uh, so these are the, the sort of the supporting factors of why flying cars make sense. Even uh, partners of Proton Geely recently uh, unveiled uh, at, I believe it was the Shanghai Auto Show, that they unveiled an uh, unmanned uh, drone uh, at their exhibition, saying that uh, you know this is going to be the, the mode of transportation of the future, and they're actually diversifying, getting into these things. Now, the technical term that they use is uh, electric, if it's electric, uh, vertical takeoff and landing, so E V T O L. So it's pronounced E V T O L. Uh, if it's not electric, then it's just V T O L. So uh, that is the technical term of air taxis, or as you would like to to call them, uh, flying cars, because they they basically sit like between uh, one and uh, six people. So technically, what a car could uh, uh, could fit, and, and it's not not exactly an aircraft because it doesn't need to take off and land on on this mega long uh, landing strip. So basically, you can take off just like an helicopter from uh, vertically, and then fly from A to B. So that gives it the the uh, the name EV tow. Now, uh, a lot of them would probably uh, have some form of uh, guidance systems which tells the, the aircraft how far it can fly, uh, what's the planned route, how it lands, where it lands, and uh, basically you're just a passenger, you sit in and, and it goes. And of course, technology has come so far because uh, electric motors are now powerful enough to create the kind of lift that you would need to, to lift the aircraft and the passengers up. Uh, batteries are getting stronger, which means they can hold more power and they can you know, fly a bit further. So again, coming back to the point, this is, not, this is not revolutionary, it's been around. Of course, the technology has caught up, so now people, I mean, these are actual feasible things that can happen. 
But where does that leave our Malaysian flying car? It was sometime in August 2019, where just at the cusp of 2020, we were told that Malaysia is working on its own flying car. And not just working on it, apparently a prototype was 85% complete. It was supposed to be launched at the end of 2019. So, just when everybody think, thought that, hey, our son 2020 not going to happen. Lah. Our uh, entrepreneur minister, Datuk Sri Muhammad Rizwan Yusuf, came out and said, no, we are on course and this prototype is going to show that it is possible. Now, the prototype itself, which was called the Vector, and I think you've maybe seen, um, you know, scale models of this, uh, reportedly had uh, lithium-ion batteries, it weighed about 600 kilos, it could carry a payload, meaning its passengers and cargo, whatever, about 200 kilos. So let's assume it could probably carry two people. Uh, and it would, be, would have a flight time of 30 to 90 minutes and have a sort of a range of about maybe 50 km or 60 km if I'm not mistaken. And they even went out and said that we're going to use Cyberjaya, one of our most uh, technologically advanced cities as a test bed to test the technology and see whether this this uh, unmanned aircraft uh, or, or big drone, if you will, could actually work. He then went on to say that the prototype or something that could actually work and you could see was supposed to be out at the final months of uh, 20, uh, 2019. So let's say October or November or December. And uh, yeah, we didn't see anything. And then 2020 came and we all know what happened in 2020. And now 2021, uh, we've way past what was on 2020. We still don't have flying cars. Uh, but hey, there was a second supposedly a second uh, prototype that was being developed uh, now by the way these these developments are done by private investors and uh, and a malaysian company aerodyne is uh, sort of the uh, project coordinator or, or basically the the producer and what they're doing is they're working with companies in japan to develop these technologies and uh, so that's how it's going to come. So apparently it's not being funded by taxpayer dollars. So that should be a good thing. And uh, and it was answered in parliament that if, you know, if all this didn't work out, you know, uh, the, the country, the country is not losing anything, but it will still be a Malaysian flying car if it does. So while there is a, a feasibility to the first prototype, and let's assume they pass the prototype stage and uh, they go into you know a, a pilot stage or a pre-production stage that you know can actually show or they can actually do uh, actual test flights and everything like we will we'll get to that i mean it, it does seem feasible the numbers are not exactly exaggerated but where the the second prototype now that one is pure out of this world kind of stuff so apparently it was uh, a second prototype was being developed uh, again in Japan by Malaysian uh, by a Malaysian company, and this was going to have different power sources. So, what could it run on? Plasma power, the stuff that you know powers Iron Man, palm oil. I mean, anyone's guess like could run on clapper parot we, we we don't know. So this second prototype apparently was uh, even more advanced and uh, they are targeting that it could, dry, uh, it could fly from KL to Penang in one hour. Uh, oh God. <laughs> where did they pull this stuff out? La? It, like it, it doesn't... Uh, here's why I think it's weird it, or why it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the Boeing is actually working on an unmanned passenger aircraft and Boeing as you know have been making planes and aircrafts for the longest time. So their prototype uh, which I believe is still in a prototype stage is called Boeing PAV. I forgot what the PAV is like passenger something vehicle. Uh, and uh, it's designed to have a range of 80 km and it flies about maybe if I'm not mistaken 70 or 80 km as well. So that's Boeing, and if they, if that's where they're saying is is the capacity, and the, the whole point of an uh, a flying car is to to eradicate or to limit uh, or reduce 
urban congestion by allowing some of those users or some of those uh, passengers to move up in the air. So we don't really need a car flying car that will go to K- to Penang in one hour. Like, way we can use the train. Uh, why not? Why not? Uh, you know, make our trains faster. You know. Uh, so yeah, it uh, again. This is so far fetched, and you know, it's just typical. Uh, you know, don't worry, Malaysia, Bole, without you know doing any. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. <laughs> it comes back to okay lah. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I hope to see at least the first prototype, which is uh, named the Factor. So if we can actually do a flight around Putrajaya, or even let's say fly from Cyberjaya to Putrajaya lah, you know that that would be something cool. That would be something I would call a, a successful test flight, or you know maybe even if it could just do these. Uh, these these flights uh, unmanned, you know, prove the technology, and then maybe try maybe from KLCC to Putrajaya, let's say, you know, so our uh, PM can can move faster for his meetings and whatnot. But uh, the second one, hmm, I don't know lah. But I would like to see the first one, and uh, so yeah, that is uh, so far what we have. Now the question is, do we really need? To take to the skies. Are there? Is there anything else that? No, I, I'm not saying that it's it's not going to be a lucrative business, and Malaysia look should be looking forward uh, at uh, at at you know sort of disruptors like this, uh, and also on the side separately, Malaysian Airports is uh, working with uh, a German company called Volocopter. So they, they're looking at ways of how they can implement the infrastructure for where these planes can take off and land and you know uh, what are the sort of uh, safety regulations they need to look at and how, how high it can fly, you know, what are the kind of uh, guidance systems that will, will work with this, with this uh, air taxis and you know, are they going to disrupt any other form of air transport. So these are, uh, I, I would say it's a, it's a good thing for Malaysia to be looking at and if we want to be sort of uh, at the forefront of uh, global technologies, it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. So I give it that. Uh, but is there anything else that Malaysia should be doing in the meantime? Honestly, if we, here's where I need to say, like, pun intended, we need to keep our feet on the ground. You know, uh, we can look at other ways. What we really need is better roads, better infrastructure. We, we need to fix our pothole ridden roads. We need better lighting and illumination along our highways. Uh, you know, we, we need more advanced sort of traffic, uh, traffic control systems, you know. Uh, we need to revamp our archaic uh, uh, road, tax, uh, road tax system for cars, you know, because uh, you, you cannot have someone who's driving a 20-year-old uh, Proton Perdana pay more road tax than someone who's buying a brand new Mini, you know, so there needs to be some way of, of uh, you know, having, uh, you know, revamping the system to be more favorable to, you know, the lower class and the middle class, you know, so, uh, and then we need to look at end of life policies. What happens to these old cars? We we we've talked about end of life policies for the longest time, and how we're going to recycle these cars so they can become new cars, cleaner cars, so that we take care of our, our environment and we don't pollute unnecessarily. These are things that really need to be looked at, you know. And further than that, we need a, a an excise and duty a taxation system that favors both local cars, uh, locally made, produced, design cars, whatever but also is enticing enough to draw foreign investments from, from uh, companies from Japan and Germany and all that. I mean, these are things that we need to do, we need to be doing right now. Now, this is going to get us closer to the actual dreams of or the promises of Wawasan 2020, not to mention EV infrastructure. We need to bring EV cars in because whatever said and done, that's where the automotive segment is actually moving. So we need to be on hand, we need to do these things faster rather than taking to the skies. But until then, I guess we'll always think about our Malaysian flying car. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, kita telah mendarat di lapangan terbang antarabangsa KL. Kepada warga negara, kami mengucapkan selamat pulang dan kepada pelawat, kami mengucapkan selamat datang ke Malaysia.